I'm Tamara and welcome to Kiko Farm. Where on this rather windy day we're doing things differently. Mushroom hunting. As you can see, our garden has a slight fungal infection. Uh, Tamara picked these beauties up. Uh, one's trying to escape, they must be fresh. And uh, we're prepping them. Now, Suz likes to peel the mushrooms before she actually serves them. Um, but for what we're going to do, which is preserving them by drying, uh, we're just dusting the caps off with a, a little brush, same one they used to clean the coffee machine. Uh, and here we are, dust them off like that. And ready for slicing and drying. Now, do I even want to go into the legal minefield of telling you how to identify mushroom? No, but this is how I do it. First of all, does it look like a mushroom you buy in the shop? Yes. Is the top all nice and smooth like that? No scales on it? Yes. Brilliant. Are these little things called gills here about that spacing and either pink or brown? Yeah, that checks out. Now, if you break one like that, it's allowed to stain pink a little, but any other colour that's a no-no. Alright, now oh, this little thing here is called a veil and um, yeah, little dirt hides in there so generally we, we, we knock it off, but it's not essential. Alright, and uh, finally, did it grow with lots of others that look like this? It's very important when you find one that's, you know, closed like that, I mean that could be in anything. Alright, so did it grow with other ones that look like that? And uh, if, it, uh, if it looks right and it doesn't stain, it's got the right colour girls with the right spacing on them, then yeah, I call that a mushroom. But then I've been eating and collecting mushrooms for, for decades. And as they say, any mushroom is edible once. Our oven has a handy function on it to keep plates warm, 50 degrees, which is fine for drying things gently. If you need a bit more airflow, then we can actually switch it to a fan oven and turn the temperature right down uh, from anywhere from 35 uh, degrees up. Uh, unfortunately, that bit's broken at the moment, but the, uh, the, the plate warming thing still works, so we'll go with that for mushroom drying. All right, let's prep some shrooms. So you want a nice, thin, sharp knife. Don't test your knife by running your thumb up and down it. All right, we take a mushroom. We don't want that dirty bit, that can go. No, no holes in the stem. This is a good sign because the grubs come up into the mushroom through the holes. Chop it in half. Still can't see any nasty holes caused by grubs. That's brilliant. Slice it in two. Bits like that. If you like, bigger chunks. Slice them like that. The thinner you slice them, the quicker they will dry. However, the more drying space you will need. Now we have uh, baking trays, uh, sorry, cake cooling trays uh, of various types. These stack, allowing us to get four of them in the oven at the same time. Take mushrooms, lay them out on there. Um, ideally they shouldn't touch, at least not very much. There we go. All that, that was just one mushroom. I've got this lot to do, so this could take me some time. We might fast forward a bit. And like that. Now we go and put them in the oven. And then we can turn the oven on. I mean, we don't need to let it preheat. <laughs> what are we afraid of? The mushrooms are going to dry out. You might be able to hear there's a fan in there, keeps the air circulating. We kind of wedge the door open with a stick, which ironically we usually use to wedge the door shut because the oven door springs above it. Now this is one of the ones we're not going to dry. I mean, I'd eat it, no, the rest of the household wouldn't. Because if you can look in there, you can see there are little holes, which means this mushroom is otherwise occupied. Um, uh, there are little holes in there. The holes in there. Like I say, it's not toxic. And if you really want to, you can eat it and like the extra protein, but uh, we're not going to dry that one. And when it's time to stack the next tray, 
just plonk it straight on top. Don't worry about those, they'll dry out just the same. While that lot's drying in the oven, I'm going to show you one of the better things to do with mushrooms. Mushrooms, sour cream, on toast. Love it. What we need to make this is mushrooms, uh, obviously, uh, some nice fresh bread, uh, butter, sour cream, real cream, lemon juice, olive oil, salt, and a glass of beer. Oh, the beer. Yeah, that's mine. Right, so what we're going to do is chop these mushrooms up, chop them nice and fine, so I prefer to skin them first, a matter of personal choice, and we'll flatten the garlic. Put the garlic into the frying pan with uh, the olive oil, not the butter, just the oil. Fry it a bit. Then we throw in these finely sliced mushrooms and a big chunk of butter. Now's a good time to put the toast on. And as we stir this lot, the butter melts and the butter mushrooms become evenly coated in butter. We throw it all in the start, just the mushrooms down the bottom will absorb it. Then when the liquid starts to come out, we bung in the cream and the sour cream. And once that's melted a little, we bung in the lemon juice and we salt it to taste. And it's just a question of um, sticking it on the toast. <sighs> yep, just like that. And next morning, there they are. So why not use a dehydrator, Vic, like every other sane person does? Well, mine is full of herbs. It's more the airflow that dries the things off than the temperature per se. And once they've reached the point where you can take one out and snap it, they're well done. And you can uh, bag them up in Ziplocs, vacuum packs, or run my old mayonnaise jars, my favourite. Ready for that winter day when you fancy a really good mushroom soup. But for now, that's your lot, down on Geeko Farm. Vic, I think we need to clean the coop. 